uh, range of things. They love it like, from, yeah, from what we hear. We yeah, get. we get amazing really feedback from people. As I said, we have the biggest online raw food uh, store in the world now. I think there's over 2,000 products. So there's such a range of things for people to choose from. And we always get such beautiful emails and phone calls from people who really enjoy um, the, the range of things and the service and, yeah, connecting to the information that we share. People seem to really appreciate having a, an external source that they can keep getting inspiration from. You know, it's, uh, it's not static, the things that we do. You know, we're always talking about new things and bringing new products and it keeps people moved in their journey. It keeps them motivated. So, yeah, it seems to... Well, yeah, so the, the changes in the raw food movement over the last eight years, um, yeah, it's become huge, as I was saying earlier, and it feels like it's always expanding here in the US, and it's amazing to see, you know, there's, it feels like it's got to the point here in the US now where you can pretty much almost say to the average person on the street, raw food, and they know what you're talking about. Whereas even five years ago, that wasn't the case. You know, it's it's not totally there yet, but it's it's almost like that. You know, I just saw um, something on Fox News a few days ago, which is like one of the major, major news channels here. And... They were talking about some story, and at the beginning of it, they said, um, you know, this guy was interested in raw food before raw food was even popular. And they were presenting the idea of raw food as if that's understood by the general public now. It's like they didn't need to explain what that means, and that would never have happened, like, five years ago. You know, so it really feels like it's becoming part of... Um, kind of everyday really consciousness more and more inspiring. here you know, so much and on. yeah in terms of the festivals and events there's so much more interest these days um for for, for people and the amount of books and websites and resources there are these days is just astronomical compared to how it used to be as well and products so we because we run this online store people send us products all the time that they would like us to add to the store and it's just movement, incredible the amount of things that people are producing and raw food restaurants foods, popping up um, everywhere. And it's, it's really inspiring, you know, so much going on. Yeah, I feel like that's really key. You know, I feel like as, a, as the raw food movement keeps on expanding, we can really be a model for co-creation and cooperation as a kind of movement or industry or however you want to think of the the raw foods um way of life because when i look at other uh ways that people are living and other models of industries or however you want to think of it it often seems like there's a lot of competition in in the way that people um treat each other and interact with each other there's this energy of competition, and I'm not interested in that, personally. You know, I'm really interested in living in the kind of reality where there's enough for everyone, and we share, and we're co-creating. And so, as you said, many people who are in the movement here really join together and help support each other. And I love that. I think that is key, and it sets such a beautiful tone and such a beautiful kind of healing environment from from which the movie can just keep on expanding rather than there being uh, more kind of chaotic energy of, you know, people trying to compete with each other or something. You know, I'm not interested in that kind of way of life. Mm. Well, um, as for when I decided to pursue this way of life, for probably at least the last 10 years or so, when I looked forward into my future, what I would always see was living on a piece of land, 
um, growing food and raising and children in conscious community together. That's just what I would always see, and especially living in a yurt. I've always wanted to live in a yurt. And so I definitely feel like this has been coming forth in my being um, for a long time now, at least a decade. And along the way, there have been so many inspirations for me about this. You know, when I was living in Iceland, I was living in an eco-village. I was um, learning about sustainable living. I was growing organic vegetables. Um, I've worked a lot on organic farms around the world. You know, I've been kind of gathering along the way. And one of my biggest inspirations in the last years were the Ringing Cedars books, especially the Anastasia, the, the first book from the Ringing Cedars um, collection. That book had more of an impact on me than any other thing I've ever read in terms of getting to the land, creating a, a kin's domain, a place where you're sharing the land with your family and you're growing your food and there's community all around doing the same kind of thing. To me, that is um, that is what life is all about you know that's what I'm excited to do so now we're actually getting to the point where that is the reality we're manifesting here in the in this world you know in this dimension so yeah we, we have our land now in Ecuador we have almost 11 acres in total and we are growing our food we became self-sustained in greens within like two or three months of being on our land there and we're creating our kin's domain and neither my partner or I had um, that huge amount of background you know in permaculture or growing food or anything and we're doing great you know it's it's not as challenging as people might be afraid that it's going to be because many of us do come from this very kind of modern civilized you know kind of city life and we're so disconnected from nature we're so you know cut off from having direct contact with our food source and all these kind of things that it can sound very bewildering like where would I start how would I grow things um you know, take it slowly, step by step. You don't have to have the most incredible, vibrant permaculture garden in the world, you know, in two weeks or something. You know, baby steps. With any big shift you want to make in your life, baby steps, whether it's exercising more or becoming a raw foodist or starting your own garden, be kind to yourself and take it slowly rather than trying to force yourself to do everything overnight and you know, criticizing yourself. Um, so maybe you just even start growing some things in your kitchen. Maybe you start growing things in containers outside. So you don't have to have acres of land to be able to start growing some food by yourself. Just get some seeds and start start moving forward a little bit and see where it takes you. Definitely. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty certain that like you'll really love well. it if you start to get into I feel like it. And we're we're thrilled.